Greetings from planet Earth, and welcome back to Metroid Other M. Uh, I suppose I'm going to try and fake it till I make it, but something tells me that even though I'd like to think the worst is behind me, uh, sad to say the mediocrity will continue. But in case, for whatever strange reason, you missed the last part, Samus went nuts uh, fighting Ridley, but she seemed rather calm after her, one of her best friends was killed. And the game has decided to throw upgraded enemies my way. What the fuck are these things again? They're like mega versions of the armadillo enemies that plagued me earlier on. And it's like now, well, we're gonna just throw better versions that are just as easy to avoid but take so many more hits. Oh, and by the way, we're also going to make them mandatory fucking enemies. God, what is with this game and, like, locking doors of areas that you've already been to? Like, for no other reason than to just screw with you. Am I supposed to feel like a badass and constantly being interrupted? It's like, please, I get it, game. Stop fucking with me. But, um... This is rather strange. I... Had a better record. Like, what the fuck? I thought the grapple point is, like, visible. Ah, what the hell ever. Anyways, yeah. Surprise, surprise. The big jolly black man uh, bit the dust. So now it's Samus, Samus, and Samus chasing the deleter. And that's the deleter, by the way. <laughs> she lost contact with Adam, and we have more of these fucking things! God! Fuck these things! And they don't even have, like, creative names. Like, whatever the regular armadillo enemies are called, you just put Mighty in front, and that's these guys' names. I, I don't remember what they're called. I don't care what they're called. Do you care what they're called? Because I sure as fuck don't. But... You know, I've been advised that, well, you're, you're not a, a, a screenwriter or a, a game script writer. Like, what do you know? You, you couldn't come up with a, a more plausible story than the one that the game's trying to come up with. Well, actually, I could. And that's not me being a, a complete arrogant douchebag, which maybe I, I, I could be. But first things first... We're gonna chase the deleter some more. Get through some more side hoppers. And I'm gonna do this shine sp Oh, fucking. Oh no! Oh, what? Looks like the deleter doesn't want us following him. A pixel hunt! Well, maybe look at the bridge! Maybe... Look at the door! No, you're actually looking for this fucking terminal behind you, which the deleter shot up just to make sure that there's no way to activate the bridge on this side. Oh no! I guess the deleter's taking advantage of the fact that Samus couldn't possibly take the initiative and authorize her obvious space jump herself, right? gonna grow a, a pair of well she doesn't have balls but what seriously she's not only gonna authorize the space jump which is what she needs to get across she's gonna authorize the screw attack as well oh my sweet jesus this is the samus that we know and love I mean, look at this this is not it, it functions similarly to the prime games but at the same time it's it's different because you can obviously travel in any direction you want. Oh no, not that way. By the way, are power bombs authorized yet? No, no, they wouldn't be, would they? Ugh. Uh, what am I looking for to get access to those things? Huh. But anyways, this 
little cutscene that happens in this game is the root of what, you know, I, I could change one cutscene in this game. And it would add to the suspicion that Adam is the deleter, even though he's not. And for those of us who know he's not the deleter, it would give Adam a, a more caring, uh, protective light. And it would make Samus, you know, a more competent lead character. You know that scene? As if you wouldn't know that scene that I'm talking about, <laughs> where Samus just sits there waiting for the authorization go ahead to use her grapple beam. Anthony's sitting there being fucked over by the Redogian. Well, here is my simple solution before we go into cutscene hell right here. This this is something that I really like, where she self-authorizes, and, you know, even a, a backhand comment towards Adam. The, the defiant, almost sarcastic personality that she has shown in the past, non-verbally anyway, or maybe even some ways verbally, in Fusion. So, here's my idea regarding that cutscene. Instead of making her a goddamn dunce, you know, completely incapable of doing something on her own volition, uh... Take, take the scene with her and the Redogian and Anthony. You know, he's, he, you can also make the Redogian a more uh, formidable enemy. You know, because it's such a reoccurring enemy, it, there's no real threat to it. Add some threat to it. Maybe make the first time you see that fucking thing, Samus has to run from it just to survive. Yeah, that, that's not hard. And then you have Adam, who is not the deleter, but if the game wanted to make any suspicion to the casual player who doesn't know and wants to give suspicion to her being the or him being the deleter, um, Adam, concerned over Samus's safety and her greater use to the mission success than Anthony, who's getting absolutely manhandled by this Redogian, Adam advises her to leave Anthony and run from this enemy that's bested her in the past. Okay, she says no, and she proves herself to her superior and to us, the audience, by self-authorizing the grapple beam, leaping in to save her friend, and boom! You know, it establishes Adam as a more caring figure for Samus. He's concerned about her safety against this formidable fucking enemy. Uh, I I'm imagining for a moment that the Redogian is more threatening than it actually is in-game. You know, she leaps in to save her friend, and it makes Samus more in line with that woman who, quote unquote, from Fusion, dislikes taking orders. And it makes her a stronger character fucking overall. I mean, not to mention that it, it ties into the, the flashback where Samus wanted to prove herself to Adam and save Ian. You could have that flashback be before she saves Anthony from the Redogian. And then boom, context. Then all of a sudden the flashback makes sense and something is connected and there's character progression. There's no character progression here. Now, you know, you, you can keep the fucking PTSD scene, but there's so many areas laden throughout this game whose only purpose seems to be to make Samus incompetent. No, where's the deleter? Better move slowly, Sammy. Look at her, she's even walking with a purpose. It's like she's a different character than the shit she was before. You know, just standing there, ambling into rooms. No, she's got some caution now. It's like the people who handled the cutscenes, D-Rockets... We're, we're handling two completely different fucking characters because for this little brief period of time, Samus seems almost competent. Oh no. Hey, what are you doing waltzing here? Didn't we leave you in the cryosphere? I'm not a member of the Galactic Federation. Just look at the suit! I'm here because I intercepted the distress call. I'm a bounty hunter. Well, that's so much better. And I know that something is after you. Please, you must believe me. Please, you must believe me. Surely I'm convincing. Please, you must believe me. 
You know, she showed some emotion during the Ridley cutscene, and that's what makes me believe that Jessica Martin... Thank you. I'm Samus Aaron. What's your name? <laughs> Madeline Bergman. Well, isn't that a coincidence? So you really are the last survivor on this ship. The Galactic Federation was trying to create a special forces unit composed of bioweapons. In order to make it happen, they were attempting to create an organization modeled after the space pirates. Yes, they're mortal enemy. The Zabesians at the center. What the fuck does Zabesians even but mean? Because of a certain... The space pirates aren't native to Zebes. The Sorry to tell you, no, they fucking conquered it. The Chozo were the ones who were, were originally natives of Zebes. They're the original colonizers of the fucking planet. She must have meant Ridley. So you sent out the distress signal, even though it endangered your life? Oh, that was so big of you. I had to. I felt there was a real danger here, that if left as is, the Zabesians would continue to evolve and resurrect as real space pirates. But... By if that very... danger was real, then the risk of withholding information to protect herself was too great, clearly. And yet, wasn't she the one who set the facility's system to self-destruct? In silence, I praised her courage and sense of responsibility. <laughs> oh my... At the same time... She's internally monologuing as she's talking to someone as wooden as she is. ...under Ridley's influence became super aggressive. Would that really lead to the resurrection of the space pirates? Without a malicious force to lead them down that path, wouldn't they continue to merely follow their instincts, ultimately becoming no more than a swarm of feral creatures? Regardless, it was clear uh -huh. that the Galactic Federation was ready to consign their enormous mistake to oblivion. Send a nuke towards the ship! Fuck the deleter. And others who knew the secret? Let me skip this Wait. shit. Come on. There's another inconsistency in her story. Why go to such lengths at all? With just a small flexing of the Galactic Federation's military force, they should have been able to destroy a facility of this scope with ease. So why didn't they? Why didn't they? Wouldn't you like to know, Sammy? Actually, There was an even more dangerous plan. Come with me. Why, it's almost like you had telepathy. Like you could read the suspicion in Samus's droning inner monologue. Why the fucking dramatic camera around computers? What? That's not possible. <gasps> the Metroids were terminated along with Zebus. Yes. And the last of them. Oh, you mentioned this almost verbatim already. You're Samus Aaron, right? The one who annihilated the space pirates? Yes, that's what she said when she introduced herself Metroid to you. Metroid remnants were attached to your suit when you returned from Zebus. They were reproduced from a piece of cell structure salvaged by the Federation, and they are in this facility. Oh! <gasps> Clones! I gave you a suit of polish so you'd be at least somewhat presentable. Oh! And Ridley in the same way. At first, no one thought that the creature was Ridley. Uh, how could you? They didn't think it had potential as a, a Pokemon bird. evolutionary line hadn't been established with like Ridley ever before this. Birdie. Until one day, it attacked one of the researchers and got away. Ridley had played dead and lured the scientist into his cage. What was left? It was a horrible sight. For God's sake, In how can you control Metroids? You need Mother Brain's telepathy. When was this ever established? You need yeah. Mother Brain's telepathy. You didn't create a Mother Brain clone, did you? It's artificial intelligence. We developed an AI program that would reproduce Mother Brain's thought processes. 
We called it MB. MB! But it was just a program. It wasn't the mother herself. MB evolved as it communicated with the Metroids. It appears as though it oh. became self-aware. Um, anyways, Much the like whole the playing dead weapon. thing... It makes it's Ridley look like, like a capable fucking tactician! That's just sitting there roaring like, ah, Ooga Booga Sammy! Like, what the fuck? It wasn't that her story had holes in it. Oh, it has holes the, the size of fucking of craters. Right before her eyes. If everything she said was true. Where are the Metroids and MB? They're in an area called Sector Zero. <sighs> Again with it's the fucking dramatic computer shit. Data. It's a place like Turian. Turian. Where we propagate and raise Metroids. Oh. I began to see what the worst case scenario would look like. The ultimate They're weapon, building up the, the final metroid area of the game. Produced. And as soon as an AI that As fucked as this developed, game has been so far, at the very least we're going to be treated to a final area. Space pirates was replaced. But as the AI called MB spun out of control, the facility became a place much like the planet Zebus. It's it's not like Zebus at all. Up, galactic society would be put in peril. Even the ringleaders of the operation wanted to avoid that, but they still wanted the Metroids, and that's why they decided to capture the Metroids contained in Sector Zero uh, and delete the rest of the facility. Uh, I the see what you did there. Delete and everyone who knew the secret. But before the ringleaders could act, Adam appeared. Adam might have known or suspected the truth about the facility from the beginning. Regardless, since the ringleaders were members of the Galactic Federation, <sighs> they could no longer act While well, I appreciate the game trying to the explain the insane labyrinthine bullshit that it is trying to weave together. But having me added on as a member must have disrupted the Galactic Federation's plans. Madeline, thanks for telling me all this. You are discounting the fact that zero. if this is true, if this you does in fact precede hidden. Metroid Fusion, none of this should be a surprise in Fusion! None of it! The Metroid cloning program! In fact, why the fuck do they need a cell structure from the baby anyway? They go on and they make their own fucking Metroid program anyway. Does that CO happen to be... Commander Adam Malkovich? You seem to know an awful lot, lady. Oh, back into the elevator? That's strange. That's a strange point to stop on. The real leader of this operation is Commander Malcolm. Wait, 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 wait. I can't believe that he's here. You're flashing back to extend the sequence that you just fi Thank what? You <laughs> what the fuck is this? And this is part of the flashback, by the way. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. It's the deleter! He's totally gonna kill Madeline! Oh, I think I'll smile at you, deleter, before you kill me. Boom! Somebody's dead. <laughs> I'll get to that later. Those of you who've played this game know exactly what my problem with that shit is. That being the fact that, number one, it's part of the fucking flashback. So it goes from internal first-person flashback to omniscient bullshit seamlessly. Why, I, I couldn't tell you. All I know is that... I want some key hunters for breakfast. Now, 
While I love having the screw attack, and I do, there's a very distinct problem with the screw attack that I'm going to get into quite shortly. But for right now, I mean, you know, this is cool, just being able to manhandle, annihilate everything I come across just by jumping into it. Which is what the screw attack has always been. Ever since its very introduction, it just annihilates a fucking enemy immediately. It doesn't do the same thing to bosses, but then again, normal enemies aren't like bosses. And of course, in conjunction with the space jump, it means that you're able to just blow through everything. Energy capacity increased. Holy hell. Um... I have a lot of fucking energy right now. <laughs> but you're about to see what the problem with the screw attack in this game is. And, you know, even the Prime games handled the screw attack correctly. It kind of combined it with sort of a pseudo space jump, mind you. But... What? Wait, what? What? That had to have taken like five hits with the fucking screw attack. What the fuck do you call that? That's no screw attack! And may I ask why in the name of God I am not like going full speed ahead? That's more like a game. Okie dokie, um... Yeah, d do you have a problem with this? Because I sure as fuck do. If you're gonna introduce the screw attack, why the fuck would you neuter it? You're gonna tell me that it takes five hits, whereas if I fire one missile, and it stuns these fucking enemies, and I move in for a lethal strike. In, in two strikes, I kill an enemy, whereas with the screw attack, it takes five? Intellectually explain this to me. Like I say, even the fucking Prime games handled the screw attack properly. It one-shots any normal enemy in those fucking games. Oh, these aren't normal enemies, Lan. These are, these are uh, like, mighty armadillos. I don't give a shit. And oh wait, we have another quick time event, and we have the Redogian again. I fucking hate this game. And of course, well, I mean, oh, of course the screw attack wouldn't do shit against him. Why? The Redogian's using that interesting attack again. I. Let's just super missile your stupid ass. Boom! I, I I seriously can't get over the screw attack being this fucking useless. Against this thing, sure, I, I can understand that. It's a mini boss. But why the fuck can the screw attack not kill a normal enemy? And we totally didn't lift this from the Prime Games. Our reward for finally killing the Redogian? Saker missile. Functions pretty much the same as it did in the Prime games. Uh, just as situational as it is in the Prime games. Yeah, I... At least in the Prime games, it gives a purpose beyond opening maybe two or three doors that are special. Why? I, I don't know, but they are. What the fuck just happened? This is like badception right here. Like, what? How? How do you fuck up the screw attack? How do you. Well. How do you fuck up a lot of things? It should be the major question on everybody's mind. But our mission, and what many could conclude, is the final area of the game, Sector Zero, the place like Turian, 
It's filled with Metroids. It's got MB in it. It's the final area of the game. It's the... It's the arc that the evil Nazi Galactic Federation seeks to claim for itself. And I'm just going to sit here and run in circles all fucking day because I can. Boom! Shine spark into the elevator. Yeah, we seem to have a clear pattern. We've visited every area twice, and this is going to be our second visit to... Oh, not these things! And again! Why would you introduce the screw attack if you're not going to utilize it properly? Why? It, it's a simple question, like... If you're not going <sighs> to... Introduce it later then. Samus didn't need to activate the screw attack with it, especially since for some reason this is still not endgame. You think it is? Oh. You should think it is. What the fuck? Now, the screw attack isn't worthless against all enemies. I mean, just most of the ones that it introduces later than you see the screw attack, or right around the time you see the screw attack. Um, it's kind of... Uh, it's like the silver bullet for everything that you've seen up to when it gets authorized, except for the stupidly weird armadillos. But as if we didn't have side hoppers on steroids in uh, Sector 3, we now have side hoppers on steroids on steroids. But that enemy gets one shot. That enemy that we had no way, at least not, not to my knowledge, of killing until now. Okay. But there is one problem with this. Um, our destination is way in the middle of fucking nowhere. Like, hardcore in the middle of fucking nowhere. So, and I should mention right now that um, one of the really nice things about the speed booster is that it will not lose the momentum that you have gained if it's trying to like load um, the next room. Like if you're running into a door, it, it doesn't stop because it, it, it treats the game as having paused, even though it's not paused, but it's loading. In fact, I, I don't understand it. But at least now I can totally cheese all this shit by making... What the hell? I killed it and then I kept attacking its shield after I killed it. Whatever. Uh, the space jump is liberating. It really is. But why in God's name do you neuter the screw attack? It's not against every enemy that it sucks. It's just most of them that you've introduced that are tougher than your average... Jabroni. Uh, oh, God. Well, did I just shine spark and kill that fucking thing? That's awesome. The Seeker missile has a use? Um, the Seeker missile is highly awkward, as a matter of fact. Uh, it's basically like the super missile. You have to charge up your beam and then fire missiles, but if there's multiple targets, instead of firing a super missile, it'll fire five small worthless missiles. And in combat, it is... I'm not even going to say situational at best, because I've never found a use for it in combat besides specific boss encounters, uh, of which I, I, I actually can't think of a situational use for it in combat right now. But anyways, there was a lot of plot exposition. The deleter seems to have killed Madeline Bergman. And the screw attack is neutered. 
I came up with a, a in in two minutes of thinking, I came up with a better scenario for how Samus would have handled the situation with Anthony and the Rodogian that would have lended itself to Samus's character, Adam's character, the murder mystery with the deleter, you know, having her leave Anthony to die would have furthered that failed plot arc. And overall, I, I, I think it's a good way to do it. There are some people who, who will say that they have other ways of, of going about. I, I want to hear those other ways. Now, I mentioned until now that, like, what would you change about this game? Like, it's abysmal soundtrack or anything. But I'm interested in hearing what you guys have to say about what you would do in certain story situations to assist Samus's character or Adam's character or, well, Anthony's probably the best character in this game besides me! And, uh, yeah. So, I'm interested in hearing what you guys have to say. Uh, this has been a a pretty uneventful part. A whole lot of plot. Uh, a, a little bit of exploration. We got this awesome fucking space jump screw attack combo now, but it's neutered to hell. Anyways, next time, um, I believe I will get to Sector Zero. Looks like it's a ways away, but it's actually a little bit closer than you might think. So, I will see you guys next time. Have a good day, everybody!